Hello and welcome. I'm Denise Ringler, Director of the Church and Center for the Visual Arts. Since last March, Church and Center gallery visits have been limited to student and class tours. In order to continue sharing our exhibition programming with campus and community, we've maintained our exhibition schedule without much disruption, offering access to work by a wide range of contemporary visual artists in a virtual format along with online resources such as gallery videos, art talks, and virtual study guides. We're pleased to offer this virtual tour in order to recreate what it might feel like to tour our galleries as part of an actual visit to the Church and Center. The following is a walkthrough of recent exhibitions starting in the West Wing. We'll begin with the Mayor Gallery, which overlooks King Street in downtown Boone, and we'll then proceed to the East Wing, concluding with the Main Gallery. As the tour progresses, we'll read statements describing each of the exhibitions we'll be visiting. We hope you'll continue to check the website for the latest Church and Center resources, as well as updates on our plans for reopening to the public. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the tour. The following is an artist statement by Esperanza Cortez. My interest in the folk art traditions, art rituals, music and dance of Latin America, the Caribbean and Africa, and their continuous and evolving changes are all at the core of my practice. I utilize a wide variety of materials and artistic methods, often in combination with rewarded found objects that are impregnated with cultural symbols that act as sites of memory. The handcrafted artworks, which are poetically and intricately crafted create an intimate repository for individual and collective memory and implement the human body as a symbol and an expression of nature, vulnerability, and power. Physicality informs my practice through body memory. As a former Afro-Latin dancer, my work seeks to underscore and use sacred space in the patterns of dance and percussion. I use music and fragments and history as a departure point to investigate and build the structure and space of the installations. My artworks are organic, improvisational constructions that are infused with hope and renewal. Esperanza, hope, is a guiding force in making of my work, which is a call and response to people, culture, place, and history. My installations which are organic and improvisational constructions are infused with hope and renewal. As a multiple multidisciplinary artist, I create sculptures, installations, reliefs, and works on paper, site-specific outdoor in interventions. I use my work to encourage viewers to reconsider social and historical narratives, especially when dealing with colonialism and raises critical questions about the politics of erasure and exclusion. My recent work examines the extent to which a consciousness, national or personal, defines itself through the opposing force of transcultural experience. My work is an exercise of collective memory and underscores its transformative potential and triggers a reflection of issues of interpretation, dialogue, and a role of contemporary culture in our global reality. I create structures for collaborative dialogues as expressions of personal community truths and histories. The following is an artist statement by Christina Laurel. A refugium is a specific environment in which a species can survive, whereas outside this environment it cannot. The butterfly is my chosen nature motif for this refugium, strong yet fragile, enduring yet temporal. By walking among the socially distanced, freely rotating, suspended cocoons, the viewer becomes part of the installation. When the biodiversity scientists E.O. Wilson brought to my attention that even a butterfly species are endangered, the metaphorical leap to our own species was not far. Key to our survival is refuge within an oasis of calm, a counterbalance to the sensory bombardment of our daily lives. Refugium 
is just such an oasis. On May 20th, 1937, Amelia Earhart and navigator Fred Noonan took off from Oakland, California on their first leg of their historic round-the-world flight. They disappeared 43 days later while trying to locate tiny Howland Island in the remote Pacific. 83 years later, after Earhart's disappearance, her legend survives and the many individuals still searching for evidence of what happened to her on that fateful day in 1937. With this photographic project, Matthew Arnold documents the environs that play host to the many theories which attempt to resolve the mystery of Amelia Earhart's disappearance. The work presented here is from the first stage of Arnold's project, a five-week expedition to the outer reaches of the northern Mariana and Marshall Islands, photographing the seascapes and the landscapes specific to the, quote, Japanese culture, end quote, theory. It is a theory that involves a forced landing in forfeited Japanese territory, followed by capture, imprisonment, and possibly execution at the hands of the Imperial Navy. Matthew Arnold says about his work, quote, My photographic work explores our historical, personal, and cultural relationship to this increasingly small and complex world. I strive to connect the specificity and the significance of history with the topography of the land on which the history is shaped and the experience of the individual on that land." End quote. The following is an artist statement by Joshua Rose. The work that I've been pursuing for the past few years reflects two different but related ideas. The first, personal in nature, is a mining and reinventing of the past 40 years of my visual work. Essentially, I am manipulating memory. As I wrote in a recent self-published pamphlet showcasing 16 of these recent pieces, quote, I read somewhere that when in a museum looking at pictures, one should briefly look at a neutral wall before going to the next image. This clears the vision of unnoticed after images that prevents seeing the new picture clearly and cleanly, an intermezzo for the eyes. That idea stuck with me, as does the implication of how to see in general. Everything is filtered through an after image of what we saw last. Thoughts are also like this, floating along in one's mind, replacing themselves one after the other with tenuously linked stream that the Buddhists call monkey mind. At times, our attention is so wrapped in this process that we are rendered sightlessly lost in a daydream. When we look up to the night sky, we not only see the endless array of lights we know to be stars and such, we also see the imposition of space and time instructively layered in light years. This informs the structure of these collages. The second important aspect of this work is that it's derived from combining images that I have made over the past 35 or 40 years, with a few from as long ago as 50 years. The resultant palimpsest of image after image is not simply the last thing I looked at, but the whole of my life as a practicing artist. It is my autobiography, my studio landscape, a collection of old roads to be reinvestigated and reasserted through re-engagement. It is from this body of drawings, paintings, and photographs that I mine the past, manipulate, combine, recombine images and materials to make new work that functions in the present. It is a look at my night sky, end quote. The following is an artist statement by Jacqueline St. Alban. Memories and experience as embodied in objects are the subject matter of my still lives. Objects play an important part of my creative process. They serve as receptacles for meaning. Objects I collect 
also make reference to the cultural myths and universal symbols. Through repeated use over many years, the objects make up a personal vocabulary consisting of symbols. The first step in my creative process is setting up a still life. I spend a great deal of time choosing objects from my collection and arranging them in an evocative way. I look for visual relationships as well as symbolic references, hoping for a narrative to emerge. I rely on intuition and emotion to guide me. This is the most difficult and unpredictable part of my painting process. Once I am satisfied with the still life, I begin painting. Now I have a very different relationship with the objects I've chosen. The moment I put brush to panel, a transformation takes place. The colors and shapes create a tactile song filled with the rhythms and melodies. Objects and images express poetic thoughts. Unspoken revelations appear. The process is meditative and calming. I am drawing from a consciousness that is hidden somewhere within me. The veil of my familiar thinking gives way to freedom of mind. This is the psychic space of painting. Suzanne Sparge and Holly Roberts share a similar sensibility. They both use collage, weaving textures and images which are incorporated into surrealistically enigmatic artworks that open subconscious doorways into the ambiguous space of the night. Haunting dreams brim with narrative, probability remaining stubbornly resistant to the literal interpretation. There are libraries of potential in a single image, the lyricism of worlds breaking apart to be restructured into new, impossible possibilities. The lost physicality of photograph, paint, and paper in our smooth digital age Memories of a time when human and animals were more closely connected. Both artists live in and are intimately familiar with the New Mexico landscape, where a deep stillness is part of the character of both the land and the people who inhabit it. Roberts and Sparge are committed to the stillness of their creative practices and taking long walks at sunset, the bewitching hours of lingering dust when the birds sing their final songs of the day before settling into their nests as the sun sets and the shadows lengthen. As night falls and the nocturnal animals emerge, finding their way onto the artist's canvases. The power of dreams is that they still open the heart and the mind of endless possibilities. In these images, the dreams of the artists emerge from the shadows to inhabit shared spaces where we are called to a deep interpretation of what we see and what remains unspoken.